Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome to Arc Basics, a show where we break down the ABCs of how to start an arc, how to accomplish things, how to achieve things, how to be the best you possibly can be. Ah, the Rhino Agnatha. All right, this guy right here, I have put out a basics video of this guy. Uh, matter of fact, there's going to be a uh, link to it uh, down below, and also I'll probably see if I remember to put a pin up in it so where it just automatically links to this video. But uh, in that basics video, I covered how to tame them and a uh, few other things. Well, today... Today, we are getting down to just the science. The, just the science of what exactly you need for the best tame, exactly what you need for, well, pretty much everything. Um, now, there are a few different uh, things that do come in handy, but if you don't have access to them, then there are certain ways of doing it. Uh, matter of fact, I really, when it comes around to, to you, it's just really basically, it's just how are we going to solve this problem? Right. Well, you know, I realized that in YouTube video, YouTube video guy says, right. Well, what you need is you need a net gun. Well, if you don't have the net gun, what are you going to do? Well, you're going to grab it and you're going to try to drag it to a place where you want it. And that's kind of what we're going to be doing. But we're also going to be using a net gun as well. It's just the net gun. It does almost the exact same thing. It just holds it in place. That's really it. That's all it need. That's all it does. All right, but um, for the testing today, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be testing a whole bunch of drag weight. We're going to be testing a whole bunch of imprint stuff. We're going to be testing if you can tame multiple ones with the same Rhino Ignatha. And we're also going to be testing uh, a trap that pretty much, you know, I've been thinking about seeing just how well this is going to work. I've been thinking about how it's going to happen. Now, um... We're going with stone. I don't know yet if it's if uh, it can damage stone. I would assume it does. If it does, then we're just gonna have to come back with metal ones. It's fine. And now we're going. I'm going with ten dinosaur gateways, behemoth gateways, um, and three reinforced gates. That's what I'm gonna be using for the science, just so I can lock it in, and then we can try to do a repeated uh, type uh, scientific test over it and. What I learn, I'm going to give you guys the absolute results so you guys know exactly everything that you need to know about this uh, dinosaur. Because there's a lot of questions, and I wish I had answers. Well, at the end of this video, you and me both are going to be having the answers. That's the, that's the goal of this video. All right, now I already know that uh, the dinosaur, it's very dependent on the drag weight of the dino that you use, which means that um, in order for you to uh, get the best possible tame off this guy, you're going to want to have big dinosaurs. Um, and I've got a couple extra gigas actually waiting for me over at the obelisk that I'm going to be picking up as well. I've also been breeding some. All right, so... Um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using different size dinos. Now, in my previous basics video, I used a trike. A trike is probably one of the worst things that you could actually use for it. Because, um, and what I'm talking by drag weight is when it's either when it's dead on the ground and then you try to pick it up and drag it, right? Uh, a lot of like uh, what went into taming the Carcharodontosaurus. Uh, when you pick up, say, like a woolly rhino, you need to buff your weight up quite a bit just so you can pick that up and you can drag it to him. That is the drag weight of the dino. So what we're going for is stuff that is like massive, all right? Because a trike has a 300 drag weight. If you have a 300 weight in your inventory, you can actually pick up a dead trike and you can drag it across the map. All right, certain things have different uh, drag weights. Uh, Rex is what, 775 or something like that? A Giga is uh, 1,000 or 1,200, which means that you have to have a lot of weight in order to be able to drag a dead Giga. All right, so, and we're going for things that have specific massive drag weights. Now, also, drag weights, they also affect things about um, the size of dinos that you can bring into boss fights. If it's over a certain drag weight, you just can't put it in the boss fight. It, it's just not allowed. And those ones are, um, oh, Bassies, Brontos, Carcharodontosaurus, and Gigas. Those are the ones we're going for. And since we can't use a Bassie for this, or at least, I mean, I'm not sure I want to put myself through the torture of trying a Bassie, we're going to just be using Carcharodontosaurus, Bronto, or Giga. And I think I'm, for the top end one, I think I'm going to be using Giga. Now, my goal is to trap a Rhino Agnatha, get it to impregnate a Rex, 
and then get it to impregnate a giga and then see the vast differences between the two. And now the idea is to get them homogenous so it's the same parent that's doing it. Wish me luck. All right, now the key thing you're probably asking yourself, or I mean, most everybody already knows, but if you if you've uh, haven't heard yet, they spawn in the swamps, mostly on Lost Islands and the island, which means that if you're looking for Rhino Ignatha, you need to go to the swamp. So let's head over there and let's go see if we can actually find a couple because it takes a couple. Now you have to get the pheromone. The pheromone is the first thing you need, and it's gender specific. It has to come from a male Rhino Natha, which means that you need to find the male and you need to kill it, which means that we've got pheromones that we've got to get, which means that I've got to get at least two, maybe even three uh, Rhino Natha pheromones. All right, now the trap I'm going with is going to be a two-chamber trap. Now, I'm thinking... If you want, since it's a Rhino Anatha, then you're going to want to actually have it close to the swamp. That way there you can drag it to the trap. Uh, because once the trap is placed, unless you're playing on a modded server, and we are not, which means that uh, you're going to have to have it close by so you can drag it, because taming it out in the open, it, while it is possible, it's not ideal. You want to do it in the traps where you can repeat the process. So let's see. Uh, let's go like this. All right, when I'm placing down the trap i'm trying very close very hard to make sure that we are the only things that can be able to get through it because we're going to be inside this trap we want to get outside the trap and we want to do it in a way that is actually uh safe for us now i would imagine you could probably do this with about seven uh traps just because a mode one stack uh, it's just I wanted to have ideal testing for testing area for this, so I went with ten. That should be good. One more. Okay, so now that we've got this, let's make sure we can run through the side. Yes, we can. Let's make sure that our Rhino Natha cannot go through it. It's going to be very important for the test. No. All right, let's fly back down. Try the side. No. Try the other side. No. Okay, so now what we want to do here is we want to set up a, a chambered system gateway. All right, so there. And one on the other end. Right there. And then one in the very, very center. Okay, so... One, two, three, four, five. Right there. All right. So this center one, this is going to be uh, the chamber divide. So what we have is when we come inside of here, when we lure it in, we want to be able to have this open. This open. All right. And this one closed. Okay. So, and then once we bring it in, we can either... Uh, Oh, uh, you want to drag it over past this gate, and once it is inside its own little chamber, you close it on it, right? And you can even close the outer gate right here once it is actually inside, and then just lure it over here, and then you can kind of bounce inside there. You have a little bit of playtime, just don't get hit by the resin while you're doing it, so I would imagine that... I probably should have put the gate one more in, but that's okay. All right, and then the goal is... Whichever gyno gets, or whichever chamber it is in, when it uh, impregnates whatever dino you're using, you just go to the other chamber and you lock the rhino natha inside this chamber so where it has no choice. It has to stay here. That's the goal. That's the plan. That's what I'm hoping will work. All right, so the goal is we've got two gigas... And one Rex. We're going to be impregnating all three of them. One of them is going to be getting the uh, um, uh, the imprint stuff, uh, which means the craving stuff. And the other one is not going to be getting the craving stuff. One of uh, the Rex is going to be getting the craving stuff just because I want to see what the max that you can get off of Rex is. Now, I have a sighting out here in the swamp. I'm going to go see if I can try to uh, lure it in. I will see you guys in just a few minutes.
All right, so we've got her in here, and I have, uh, when you bring something into a trap, a lot of times you'll aggro on the trap. I just logged out, and it reset aggro. So now we've got her in here. All right, let me get my Thyla back out of here. All right, come on, bug bait. All right, so now this is how uh, the trap works, is that you can just do your thing. Make sure everything's on passive. And we're going to get this Giga pregnant. All right, so let's get him in here. Close this. Make sure we've got this loaded. Now, if you don't have this, um, I if you don't have a net gun, I would recommend just making sure that you go off to the side and you kind of just shoot it until it's bloody and just pay very close attention. Uh, bring it down a bunch with a um, shotgun and then after a little bit, switch over to like a long neck or something like that. Maybe even a crossbow. That way there you can just bring it down incrementally. But the goal is you're getting them below 10%, just like a reaper. Paying very close attention. I heard a little murmur. Yep, that murmur is what we're looking for. Feed you, and we're getting out of here. Wait for her to get up. Then when she does, she should impregnate our Giga. And the goal is, when um, after she's done feeding, that, that normally their AI just says, hey, just fly off into the sunset. We're not letting her fly off into the sunset. That's the purpose of this trap. Do it? No, she didn't. I think she did it just then. Yep, she did. All right, so did she fly off? No, okay. So now that she's right in that section, we close that section, leaving her trapped inside of there. We open this section. And we're gonna get this guy. Well, actually, you know what? Let's see if we can actually just straight up right away. Get this guy impregnated. Okay, she is aggro. Get impregnate. Okay, she's kind of stuck in the wall. You might have healed up. No, she did not heal up. Okay. We're going to see if they can actually get uh, become buddy-buddy. And I'm going to pay very close attention to this one. This one right here, I don't think I'm going to be uh, paying attention to is brave. Actually, I think I will. We'll see how this one goes. Okay, now the list of stuff that they can crave is rather extensive, which is another reason why these guys are such 
end game tames. She just does not want to be impregnating. Out of there. A little food in me. She might have to uh, heal up to max before uh, it goes. Either that or we may just have to go see if we can find a, a different one. I thought I did really well with finding a high level one to see if we could actually do it, but no. All right. Okay, so she did get this one. It's cravings. And now she's aggroed on me. Okay, so keeping her in the trap, she will aggro on you. So be very careful of that. And I keep missing her. There we go. Alright, so while she is trapped, we'll take this, put you over here, close this. No, no, no. Wrong, wrong button. Alright, close that one. Open up that one. Get you out of here. Uh, purple is the one we are not paying attention to the cravings. Okay, we just want to see just how it's going to be when it gets up there. Let's get the Rex ready to go. And we'll see just what kind of difference this is. And I'm going to get this done, and I will bring you guys back when we actually have a result on something. All right, and our Rex is already imprint, is already give, be, given a baby, so we're gonna go rescue him. It doesn't look like I need to. Okay, she's flowing off. Okay, so we can get the Rex out of here and we can go pay attention to them. All right, and I will uh, show you in the video a list of all the stuff that you need to have on hand uh, to uh, pay attention to this Rhino Anatha. Uh, the baby as they're going up as they need imprints so this rex is going to be getting full imprint the um, red giga is going to be getting full imprint and the purple giga i'm sorry you're not getting any of your cravings because i want to see the difference between the two okay one thing that i have noticed is my giga's health is going down really fast so whatever you do you have to make sure that they are fed because their health is going down, their food is going down, they're getting their cravings are driving them nuts. So you need to pay very, very, very close attention to this. Just keep their food up to max, and that should help them out as much as possible. Because you don't want them to starve to death before. No, I'm just gonna feed. A bunch of food in you guys. Make sure you have food in your dinos before you do this. Yeah, this one right here. Doing pretty bad as well. How are you doing on... Battle Tartar. I'm worried about the Gigas getting really low on health and then enraging. I'm going to... See if it does happen, then I will bring you guys back. But they're getting really, really close to dying. So, yeah. All right, and there goes that Giga. All right, so flying home, we have our three babies, but this is the stuff that you have to have with you whenever you are imprinting these guys because of the cravings. You need It can be any of these things. It can be uh, absorbent substrate. It can be acatina paste, and specifically acatina paste, not cementing paste. Uh, ammonite bile. This one actually wanted quite a few of it. Uh, battle tartar. Uh, Kalian soup. Uh, Carcharodontus eggs. Uh, elements. Enduro Stew, Exceptional Kibble, Extraordinary Kibble, uh, Focal Chili. For some reason, they just love the Focal Chili this time. And then also the uh, Kalian Soup. Uh, Freya Curry, 
uh, gasoline, golden Hesperornis eggs, not the easiest things. Keep those on hand. All right, Gigasaurus eggs, uh, Lazarus chowder, Quetzal eggs, uh, Shadow Steak Saute, uh, Superior Kibble, uh, Sweet Veggie Cakes, and Woolly Rhino Horns. It can be any of those things for what it needs for its cravings. So if you're doing this, you got to keep those things on hand. Put them in a dino that you're taking out with you and just, or in your shoulder pet if you can, if you've got a big enough one that actually has enough weight allowance. All right, so here's the results, and we're going to look at these guys inside the cryopod really quick. Uh, let me see. Let's put that. Thank you. All right, so this one right here is the Rex with the cravings met. And I have noticed that the, uh, um, oh, the determining factor about their colors is a mix. Um, of the one of the Renu Anatha you find in the wild, and then also of the Rex that you're, um, or of the Dino that you're using. So this one right here actually turned out pretty decent. Seventy two hundred twenty six health, uh, melee damage two sixty seven. Uh, oh, uh, stamina eight hundred five. Not bad. Seventeen twenty eight weight. Lots of oxygen. Yeah, that one is actually pretty decent. All right now, this is hold on the uh, juvenile with Rhino Natha with the uh, Giga no cravings met and no cravings tanked it across the board. That right there, it's it is just absolutely atrocious. But the colors that it got were a mix of the uh, the purple Giga that we used and then also the uh, um, wild Rhino Natha. So that is actually pretty cool. Now this one right here is the um, Cravings Met one. This one right here should be the best stats, but for some weird reason, it is not. The Rex is the better stats. This one right, I mean, and I think that's just because we used a Giga. Gigas have really low base melee damage. Yeah. Granted, the weight is higher, 7826. Their health is the exact same, and their melee damage, the melee damage on this one is so much better than the melee damage on this one, and that's because I'm thinking because there's a chance of when you're breeding with these dinos that you want to, the, the male and the female has a specific amount of chance to impart its its stat onto the baby. And it's a role as to whether it gets the male or the females going down. Now, when it comes down to the uh, um, the Rhino Natha, it takes the host as the male stats, and it takes its stats. So it can be a mix of the two. So uh, from looking at this, the wild Rhino Natha had 7,226 health. And both of these got the roll for that health. And I'm thinking that the stat rolls are also tied to uh, whether or not they get the color. So say if it gets like the mother's stat, the mother's health, then it gets the mother's first color. If it gets the father's melee damage, it gets the, um, the oh, that color that's attributed to that stat. Yeah. Um, this, this is kind of what I'm speculating here on this. And I'm thinking it's pretty good. My hypothesis from this, since I know Brontos are the same as Gigas when it comes to this, I would recommend using only Brontos to tame your Rhino Natha. Because Gigas and Karkas, they have an inherently lower melee damage. Brontos don't have that. So from these findings... I would recommend 100% only use Brontos to tame your Rhino Anatha. Because, Rhino, uh, because Brontos, you can get up to 400, 500, 700 melee damage. Gigas, you're going to be breeding them for years to get to that. Some people have, most people haven't. So, yeah, from these findings, use Brontos. All right, let's throw these guys out here, and then we're going to be imprinting these guys... And then also, when I say use Brontos, I mean use Brontos and make sure you have a dino nearby that has all the stuff for your cravings. All right, so uh, from sitting here and imprinting them and then going up, I've been looking over their stats a little bit. So 
The biggest thing is the cravings. Make sure that the cravings are always met right on time. Have it in a shoulder pet right next to you. Have it in a dyno right next to you. Get it on there. And I actually think I may have missed up uh, on one of their cravings just for a little bit. But uh, it should be fine. Just make sure you stay away on top of the cravings. That is the biggest thing. Also, the dino that the host dino that you give it is also a very important aspect of it. And then I noticed that the stats. Well, here let's take a look at uh, adolescent cravings. All right, this one right here. It only got a percentage of the stats that we got. So I would imagine that it probably starts off with a modifier, a base modifier, and each time you give it the uh, uh, cravings that it's required or that it's asking for, it means that it gets more of a modifier added onto it as well, which means that the cravings get those cravings in there. Uh, the other ones, um, I would recommend, like I said before, don't use Gigas for this. Don't use Carcharodontosaurus's um, for this because they inherently and naturally have a very low stamina stat and a very low melee stat. So that because they have such a huge modifier, they the low melee stat is kind of required. So I would recommend don't using the, either of those two. Um, the one, like I said, that I would recommend using is a Bronto, which means that honestly, people are going to be like, I need to get me more Brontos. But you know what? If it helps you get the best dino you possibly can get, hey, get those Brontos. All right. Okay, and here we are. This is the final result of all of their imprinting, everything, as it goes forward. So the Rex, with the cravings met, this is its final stats. Not bad, not amazing, although it will have a rather high modifier on the health and a decent modifier on the melee damage. This right here is the Giga, all cravings met. This is much worse. And by much worse, I mean... It has a so much lower melee damage. Yeah, it has really high oxygen, but let's see. What's the weight on this one? Okay, so the weight on the Giga one is a little bit better. All right. And then we have this one right here. This one is just atrocious. That is without the cravings. So I do think I'm going to... One last little test. I'm going to go test my hypothesis, and we're going to go get a Bronto and do that. I will see you guys in a, a, quite a while. All right, getting her back inside of there for the test. All right. All right. Bronto has been fed. Have at it. Oh, we need to get that thing down. All right, the Bronto is pregnated. Where is she? Right, okay, there she is. Get the Bronto over in this side. All right, and by the way, she wasn't in the trap when I got back. She had actually come out. That's usually what happens. Getting her back into the trap, super easy. All right, now we're going to be answering this guy's cravings and making sure that uh, he has everything. Uh, this Bronto has everything it needs. And also, just FYI, the Bronto has 349.3 melee damage. That's what we're shooting for. And also, just because it worried me a lot last time, because their health goes down quite a bit, I also brought some veggie cake. Just in case. All right, so the veggie cakes are helping out quite a bit. And so is the food. I may have to go get more mesos. All right, and with the Cravings Dino next to you, getting what they need is super easy. Make sure that you have a dino on next to you that has all the stuff. All right, so this thing, it's down to its last one. Its last one was a carca egg, but I don't think it would have survived without the uh, um, veggie cakes. I think it would have died in the middle of this, so you have to bring veggie cakes, and I would recommend at least 10. I only brought seven. It's already eaten all the way through all those, and it's still rather concerning. hoping it makes it <laughs> all right here we go
148. Okay, that's not what I was expecting, but... Okay. So our best results were the wrecks. Okay, so, using Karkas, Gigas, and all that, does it really matter? Um, as long as you have a really good bread, uh, Rex, or something like that, honestly, yeah. Uh, I would recommend also, once again, using Brontos and not the, uh, um, the Giga, even though it appears that our roll that we got was, on this, was the Wild Females. Uh, because you are going to, like I said earlier in the video, when you tame, when you breed, you have a chance to get the mother stats and the baby st or the and the father stats. It looks like we rolled the f the mother stats. Um, now, um, when you have a chance, it will be. Yeah, it will be determined by the male or the female. And I, normally I would just say it would be, you know, it's all based on the wild female stats. But the Rex's one proves that wrong. Because the Rex's one was completely different. And ancestors, there are no mutations. Which means that this one right here got the Rex's melee damage. Yes. So, get something that has high melee damage, high health. Unfortunately, we got low rolls from the parents on the breeding. So, we got the uh, um, the mother's uh, stats for um, the melee damage. But the Rex's one got the father's, which is wicked, wicked important. So, yes, that is my recommendation. Use stuff that has big health pulls, big um, damage pulls, that it can pull from, so where when you get lucky and you get the father's uh, stats from that. Alright, let's compare this one to... Yeah, they're identical. I mean, this one right here is imprinted, but yeah, they're identical. So yes, my recommendation is don't use Carcas and Gigas for imprinting these guys. Uh, honestly, a Rex is better. Um, well, a Rex with high stats is better. Uh, a Rex that you've been imprinting. If you've been, uh, raising up Rexes for a boss army, use one of those because you're going to have like 15 generations. Or if you, uh, uh want to skip some of that, go for a Bronto. It's actually a little bit easier. But if you go for a Bronto, use, uh, veggie cakes because the Bronto, I mean, mine would have died halfway through that uh, impregnation. So either use Rexes that you're raising for bro uh, boss armies or use Brontos. Don't use uh, Gigas or Karkas. Honestly, I think uh, those, because of their low stat pool, um, their low uh, health and uh, stamina stat, means that it's actually going to be hindering you. So, all right. So that's what my science has shown. You guys have seen everything I've seen. What's your hypothesis? I'm pretty sure that... Uh, yeah, go with something that has a high stat pool, and then that should work. So, hey, I hope the video helps you out. I hope uh, um, you enjoy the video. If you like it, make sure you give that. Um, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you're new around here, subscribe. And until next time, this is Flinger, and as the sun is going down, take it easy, everybody.